So yeah, guys, I'm going through some stuff. Uh, I need some help. Uh, do you guys know any life coaches? <laughs> what? Oh, look, Keith. Keith. Hey, guys. I'm a life coach. <laughs> I'm actually a lifestyle and health coach. But <laughs> what does that mean? Lifestyle and health coach. Yeah. So I can help you change your bad habits into good habits. Drop so that intro. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my skit. Okay. You edit the shit out of this, you're gonna make this gold. <laughs> okay. If I All know right. Brian Zamari, he'll make this gold, even if it's terrible. I'm gonna make this as comfortable as possible. <laughs> Let's find out. Well, when you're done with that, you got a sour beer. Okay. So, did you, when you drank, did you ever have sour beers? No. I so, have... this is a new thing. Uh, it's relatively new. It's like, like it's, hoppy? It's, no, it's sour. Like, okay. it's actually sour. So no. you're drinking like a... It's like sour candy. Sour mm. candy. No, never. Yeah, but it's a thing now. And uh, they talk about... So Burley Oak is a brewery in uh, Ocean City. Mm. It's a really so good brewery. So it's local. Yeah. yeah. So every... I drink... I'm like a beer fan. Like right. It's not, no, it's not... It's not... The joke now, they say, is it's not a problem. It's a hobby. <laughs> Because I go to breweries, like, all the time. <laughs> I used to be a big beer guy. I yeah. used to drink a lot of fucking beer. But, yeah. uh, but I used to... Before I started with cheap beer, you know, Corona yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, Heineken. We were just talking about this. <laughs> 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 we were, like... Because we I, I was, like, I, I only... Like, I'll pay, like, two or three bucks extra for a good beer mm. unless I'm drinking, like, Corona. He was, like, what do you think about Heineken? Because... <laughs> I, I don't know. I, was, I, was, I think I was on Twitter. It's, like, Heineken is, like, top three... It's, like... Beer worldwide. Pretty... Yeah. It's, like, a good beer. Yeah, it, it's I good. Like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's so, gotten, I, t- I feel like it's gotten different. Like it's gotten more hot. <laughs> it is different. Yeah. It's like it's got. Yeah, you're right. And but it's funny because so I didn't finish my story. So Tiger Fest, mm-hmm. the last time I drank Heineken was we drank because Tiger. Have you ever heard of Tiger Fest? No, I, don't so I went so. to Towson University. Okay, and they had Tiger Fest, which was kind of like their big like, which was like concert series, all that stuff. Yeah, and all the bars did like day drinks and stuff. So I went to Towson for four years, and um, I wasn't in a frat or anything, but the bars were fun, and the day drinks were a good time. But the day drinks, it was like dollar Bud Lights, mm. and I was like, I can't bring myself to drink Bud Light, because I hate it. Yeah, it's like water It's down just water, yeah. and I'm just like, this sucks, I get bloated and everything. You piss like every 30 seconds. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> but it was a dollar Bud Lights, so I was like, I gotta do this. Like, <laughs> But I was like, what can I do to make this better? So I got Heineken's, there and me go. and my friend, who, my friend is like, he has an issue, like... It's like a problem, and but we would drink it both at the oh, same shit. time, <laughs> and so we both we both had two. We were like double fisting and just nice. walk around drinking, What's and it got and it was because the, the Heineken taste overtook the Bud Light, yeah. but the it was the extra alcohol. So hmm. college is wild. But see, the funny <laughs> thing is, I didn't start drinking until I was twenty one. You're a so good kid. I, hmm. I started drinking <laughs> senior year of high, college. I think I started drinking after I think senior. year. After senior year of high school, okay. that's when I picked it up. Heavy. See, the the funny thing about at least my class, so I graduated twenty twelve at Einstein. Mm-hmm. There wasn't much drinking Drinkers, going yeah. on. It was all like smoking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't. That. It wasn't a lot of drinking. Like, like the white table and all that stuff. They're yeah. the only ones who did it. Did you guys have? Did you guys have the same table that our class had? The big long one yeah. in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Next funny. to that studio and behind you and stuff. In the cafeteria. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not in the cafeteria, in the main street. They had it in Main Street. Oh. Did you, were you guys able to eat in the Main Street? Yeah, we were, yeah. but there we're was never there. There was a <laughs> we're yeah, McDonald's. That or in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the cafeteria, and uh, okay. I guess the white people table yeah. was like a very long table towards okay. the uh, back, towards like the yeah. doors. It was just one long table. And yeah, no, the vending machines. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And everybody bring their uh, brown bag lunch and stuff. And it's just, <laughs> <laughs> no, ours was uh, ours was on Main Street next to the stairs. Oh, yeah, I so, think I remember seeing that. Yeah. yeah, so that was there, but like our class, I like to say our class kind of cleaned up Einstein. I, I think heard because so. like yeah. your guys' class was pretty bad. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah. yeah, like I remember going as a freshman. Well, like what the shooting happened, and that wasn't. I can't say shooting. It was just it was not a guy, shooting. Guy yeah, it was a, a dummy. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the bathroom thing. Yeah. yeah. But that. like, like you got like I remember as a freshman, like you didn't go to some part some hallways. Like you, guys, <laughs> you get terrorized, especially a little white freshman. <laughs> 
like Damn. with like with I like, like, that, with like yeah, uh, the hallways bad. with like Terrence and all that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like they just like screw with people. Oh, they, they, they especially just... that one hallway you coming from Main Street, you make that first right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just standing on the. They're lockers. just standing on the lockers, oh, yeah. and just because waiting. I I think I didn't get it that hard because I was on the football team. Yeah, and I was like friends with like John and Kelson and all them. Yeah, because they like they were like I remember because I was best friends with James. Uh-huh. So they were like, if anyone messes with you guys, like, let us know. And right. John and John would always like yeah. get like, James mess with back. Him. And yeah, and then I had Sean, but Sean wasn't like, he was like a, he was like with Chris Gold. <laughs> 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 you know, he 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 got his size after high school. <laughs> he was a little, he was a little bit small in high school. No, I mean he was just somebody that caused trouble. Yeah, so, he was just minding his business. Yeah. yeah. All right. On that note, welcome. <laughs> Welcome to episode 43 <laughs> of the Catch Up Podcast with me, Brian Sumo Sumardi, the number one podcast where you feed your curiosity. Today's guest, Keith Hollister, and co host, Wilbur Umanzor. Is that how you say your last name? Umanzor. 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 Yeah, Boom. Sounds like a fake name, but. Yeah. <laughs> Spanish people say Umanzor. Umanzor. Yeah. See, that sounds more real. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds sexy. That's like sexy <laughs> it's shit. like my last name. <laughs> yeah, when I graduated, they got. Uh, person to say all the last names because there's a lot of Spanish names. Mm-hmm. They say my name, Hulister. <laughs> and I was like, how do you mess this up? Like, come on, guys. Hulister. <laughs> Said both me and my twin sister, Dana's name, Hulister. <laughs> you guys are twins? Yeah. Donna. Really? Twins. Yeah. Donna Hulister. <laughs> yeah. Donna Hulister. What are the odds of that? Boy and a girl? Yeah, man. That's crazy. It's cool. We're just like... It's yeah, just I, like I never knew that sister. until until mm-hmm. I went to your house. Like yeah. Like Sean's parties. Yeah. I thought you guys were just like brother and sisters. Yeah. We're, I mean, that's how... Like she was, she's definitely, she's definitely more uh, creative, artsy, very. Yeah. I don't want to say out there. She's like very smart and everything, but she definitely holds to her creative side. Okay. Yeah. That's Whereas cool. me and Sean are definitely. Bros. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was that when growing up, it was me and Sean, and then Dana had her friend across the street, so uh, we didn't hang out too Who's much. Who's more uh, party animal? Who's more party animal? Yeah. Um. Well, say I still love throwing parties. <laughs> I I can throw a party to this day. To this day, I can I can throw. A, you hear of a party from Keith Hollister? You come. Oh shit! And Halloween every year. Time. Yeah, Baltimore. Right? Throw, I throw some good parties. Sean Sean um Sean Sean doesn't like party throwing parties too much anymore. Dana kind of just floats around. Yeah. Um, but I definitely love like last last couple new years i always like stand up on the deck do a speech oh, like shit. pop bottles on everyone <laughs> i love the energy it's fun new year's new year's you'd also do that yeah new year's we we normally do parties on new year's but this new this next new year's we're not gonna have one so the first year that? in six years that we haven't had a new year's party. Where, where would you usually have the Sorry. parties at at my parents house we always have <laughs> <laughs> we always have parties at my parents house why don't you have one this year um I don't know. It's just like every year it's gotten a little smaller and smaller. People are like, because we've been doing it for like six years. Everybody's so. going away. Everyone's yeah. going away. Like, and oh, wants no. To try something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was pretty good. That yeah, was good. Um, Everyone's yeah, going away. And getting older, too. Like, uh, Yeah, well, and the big thing is, because New Year's is one of those holidays where like <clears throat> people want to do something, right? Yeah. They want to have a good time. And what was it? It was probably like. Oh, DC is so expensive, too. It yeah, is. Too. And that's yeah. why I love Baltimore, because I live in Baltimore City. Yeah. And it's like. It's just as fun, in my opinion, but, like, less expensive. Like, you can always find a bar that's selling dollar natty bows. Like, yeah. And I heard Baltimore, yeah. they actually, you guys stay up to, like, 4 a.m. Yeah, you can. You can. Like, the bar DC shuts down at 2. Yeah. That's crazy. DC's yeah. bar, like, you can but find. You know, I don't know, because it's Maryland, so I feel like, you know, it will have all Maryland you can, laws. You can find a bar. You can find bars. You got to know the right people. Wow. There's bars in D.C. where they don't have names. Hmm. And their basement rooms with the bar in the back. Oh yeah, those are like the legal bars. And, yeah. you know, nobody would know if you ever yeah, bar right. or not. But uh, <clears throat> now I've been to some some fun places in Baltimore, and I mean, you know, drinking or not, there's there's always something to do in Baltimore. Yeah. But like, so New Year's we started, we've been having it for about six years, but about four years ago, we started uh, dressing up. We yeah, get. yeah, that's I fun. That. I love doing that. Like okay. I wear a suit and tie, like three piece suit, mm. or tuxes. Like yeah. I gotta be the best dressed because I'm the host. Um, but it's always fun. The first year, the girls were pissed because we decided like 30 minutes before. Like, <laughs> the group text, we're like, "Yo, we just want everyone to dress up," and all the girls were like, "No, <laughs> like we can't do that." Like, yeah. and the guys, were, I was just like, "All right, well, the guys, just throw on a suit, a tie, and a right. shirt." 
And then next year, everyone got really dressed up. And I love that. That was so it's much fun. Cool. I wore in all my suits because our generation, we don't wear dress clothes like that. No, nah. nah, not really. It's not it's a just thing. It's more casual. We, don't, we, we all don't have like that one suit in our mm, closet. Corporate yeah. jobs. Yeah. We don't like it. It's not a thing. But speaking of job, I, I want to talk about your thing. Yeah. You just became a, a certified life coach. Yes. A certified, certified. Uh, I'm calling, uh, I'm my, technically I'm a lifestyle and health coach. So yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what made you get into that? Um, uh, I guess, you know, I work right now, uh, or my experience really is in uh, working with autistic young adults. Okay. I teach them how to live independently, and I've, I really enjoy it. It's one-on-one, um, and I work with nonverbal and visual, so it's it's very, it's, you really got to get to know the person. Yeah. Um, and I've doing, been doing, I've been working with autistic individuals for about, Eight years now, my nephew's on the the autistic S- spectrum. spectrum. Yeah, uh, he's just now three. Okay, and he's just like just now learning how to speak. He has one of those books. Yeah, yeah. where you like point at what he wants. So he, like, he tells my brother and nice. his wife like what he That's wants. Awesome. And he's do you and stuff. do you know what makes them? I guess autistic. Like what's caused? Like I guess what caused your brain not to function? Yeah. Well? So there's like. So there's a lot of research in that. Right. And there's a lot of controversy over the whole thing because, um, you know, some people are pro-cure, like, not, like, con-cure, because, like, so, like, mm. the word cure. So, mm. like, if we were to find the reason that causes autism, or even if we just generalize it, cause a disability, like Down syndrome, mm. or... Isn't it, um, like, genetics? It's a genetic thing, but yeah. there could be... So some people say there could be a switch, right? Oh, so, like, say we find this, right? Right. Yeah. Something that, the switch that causes Down syndrome or autism, would it be, like, morally right to turn that switch off, right? Because, oh. like, a lot of people who have Down syndrome have the voice and they're like, you know, I don't I don't care that I'm down, I have Down syndrome. I, I live my life the way I am and I'm, it makes me unique. Yeah. And so the people, so a lot of people have the same ideas about autism. There's there's a lot of um, things I've been researching like when it comes to like very special entrepreneurs, most of them are have uh, Aspergers. Mm-hmm. That's and on the, that's uh, I think it's on the spectrum now. Yeah, it is yeah. it is on the spectrum. But what it really does, it makes them like super focused. Yeah. Like it's like a Rain Man. Einstein effect. was Einstein had uh, was on the spectrum. Yeah. Over Einstein, I'm pretty sure. Don't fact check me on that. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure he was on the spectrum. There's a lot of very intelligent people because it's like, like for example, I was in college. I was a uh, physics major at first, my first year. Did not finish that. Um, <laughs> uh, but the be- the smartest kid in our class had autism. Oh, okay. He was very outward about it. He was like, yeah, yeah. I have autism. Right. But he was the smartest kid. He got A's on every test, even on the hardest test in the where everyone's getting like fifty percent, he's getting like nineties. Yeah, you know? because that was his thing. That's the thing about autism is everyone has a thing. Yeah, you know, right. Like some of the individuals, like one kid I had, it's like an idiot savant type of thing. Yeah, it's like you know one kid I had loved trains. No he lived in D.C. I can ask, how do you get from here to there? He'd be like, well, you take this train, this train, then you get on this bus, and then you yeah. take that bus without even looking at a map. And he yeah. would know like the times. Like it yeah. takes about fifteen minutes from here to here. Yeah, yeah. Chinatown, it's crazy. crazy. And this kid was like, it's like thirteen. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and, you could, and and you know you would never look at him and know he can do that, but that's one of the things about autism that's it's really it's building in the community that they're you know they're, they're people too and they have their own yeah. ideas and things. It's just they can't get them out. My brother would tell me my nephew he's very um, routine like mm-hmm. he loves his routines and if he has his routine that's a that's a, that's a he, big that's a big thing. He's in autism. his zone. But once you ruin it, yep. like every morning he has like apple juice or something, yep. you give him milk one day, he freaks the yeah. fuck out. Yeah, it's when a thing. Down. Yeah. It's a thing. Like, you start screaming. Yeah. One of the things with autism is, uh, yeah, schedules. Yeah. They always have a schedule. It's like get up, brush your teeth, drink uh-huh. orange juice. Have you ever drank orange juice after you brush your teeth? It's terrible. It's the worst thing in the world. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I've done that. But some, see, oh, that's it's... another thing about autism, <clears throat> too. Like, it's crazy. Autism, you never know what they can do. Like, for example, the individual I work with now. He can spin in a chair, like a spinning chair, like the office chair. Yeah. He has one in his house. Mm-hmm. And so spinning for some individual with autism can help them, help, can calm them, mm. right? He'll spin in that chair for like an hour, Damn. like whipping on the chair. <sighs> like he spins so hard that his toenail Wait, so you do work, work with one person? Like I work with one person day? at a time, yeah. Ah. For, yeah, so... 
because it's it's it is exhausting. So you have a lot of patience for that. Kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it's you you got definitely have to have patience. Um, did you have to go to school for uh, working with autistic kids? Or? So I did not go to school for it. You can get a degree in it. Okay. Uh, or you can get um, certificates and degrees and um, things like that. But in my opinion, working with special needs kids and individuals. Um, or individuals with autism, uh, it's all about experience, okay. yeah. you know, because none of them are not, you can't go to school to work with individuals who have autism and say, I know how to work with all of them, right? Yeah. Okay. Everyone's different, right? And, you know, there's, there's that puzzle piece, right? That's yeah. the autism, uh, kind of symbol. Mm-hmm. And it's, I love that symbol because it's like every puzzle piece is different. What is it? Is the puzzle piece is the the puzzle piece, right? Yeah, that's the symbol. Yeah. Okay. Is that kind of? It's not. I don't know if it's like an official symbol or anything, yeah. but it kind of like a lot of places that work with individuals on the spectrum. Gotcha. Um, have that puzzle piece, um, and a lot of businesses that work with it. That's like kind of part of their symbol. But um, yeah, everyone's different. So like, I can't say, you know. I have a lot of patience, and I can work with every every single autistic person. Right. Yeah, just everybody's different. Yeah, everyone's different, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, and people with autism, you know, some like the ones I work with now are nonverbal. These individuals have a voice, and they have ideas. They just can't get them out. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you see from the outside, like, oh, he's he's not talking very much. He may have autism. Um, so. If he's not talking, then he doesn't have a voice, right? Yeah. Some people, yeah. a lot of people think that, and that's yeah. the stigma. But now it's it's changing to, and that's like one of my goals is to, with the company I'm working with now, um, or I'm not very involved in, uh, is to disseminate and teach people that About, they like, do have voices and they do have opinions and they do have ways of thinking that are very unique and it's like very unconventional type of it, thing. It's it's uh, we're trying to make it conventional. Okay. You know, we're trying to make it, you know, because they're people. So, like, is that, like, your why of getting into, like, life coaching? So... Trying to get people to learn other ways of thinking? Life coaching kind of jumped in because when I graduated, I've always kind of thought about it. And I always kind of thought it was one of those, like, weird jobs. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know... It's like, hey, let let me help you with your life. Yeah. That's a weird... That's why I call myself a lifestyle coach. Oh, lifestyle. Okay. Because a life coach kind of feels like... Feels like kind of weird, yeah. You know, it's kind of like like, uh, little, like I'm not gonna say snobby, but like I'm gonna fix you. Yeah, I'm gonna fix your <laughs> life. I'm, like a, I'm a life coach. Um, whereas so a life, lifestyle, what is, what is like? lifestyle? I like I like saying that because it feels more. It's more relaxed. It's more natural. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm. We're working on stuff. With, I'm your coach for your lifestyle. I'm not trying to fix your life. Just trying to change something in your lifestyle that can help you be happier within your life. Like the perfect feeling I feel is like this. It's like. I just hear that every time I hear like a life coach, that kind of yeah, thing. Exactly. It's really sad. Like <laughs> I'm really depressed right now. But uh, tell me, how do you actually like work with people then? So, so lifestyle coach uh, and health coach. It's what I do right now is one on one work. Right, we do you know phone calls, me in person uh, for hour sessions. Um, I have different packages and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. for the most part, it's an hour session. Um, and, uh, we just, we work on goals, accountability. We, we talk about the reason, the things you want to change and the reasons why you want to change them. And it's all, it's all driven by you. Yeah. Like if I was your coach, it'd be all driven by you or you. Right. Like I'm not sitting here telling you you need to do this and this and this. I'd ask you a certain amount of questions in a certain order in order to get the result. Right. You know, like I would say... Do you have like a system that you kind of check through? Yeah, like, kind of. Do you know yourself in certain situations? Yeah, I, I have a... I have a. It's like... Um, it's, a, it's a structure. I have a structure for a conversation in order to get certain thoughts ahead of each other because that's one of the problems is, you know, you get... Um, when you get ahead of yourself, you know, you get... You, then you take yourself out. When do you yeah. know you completed... I guess completed your job. Like, okay, I did the right thing, right? I, I um, did it right. My my goal in 
lifestyle coaching and health coaching is to get someone thinking more positively from when they were before. Okay. That's what I want. And so so my the people I, I focus on and work with are people who are in transition in their lives. So people who want a new job because they're not enjoying their job, so they come home stressed every day. Yeah. They're very negative about it. So my goal in that case is to get someone who um, – get someone to if if they if they ch- they're in the transition of wanting to get a new job yeah. i can't come to you and say you look like you need a new job right like let's get you because they're not ready for that you mm-hmm. know it has to be a it, you can't force somebody into this no. well let me ask you something like how, how do you think um who's the perfect person like you would want to work with like someone who's going through a certain transition like i know like me personally, I've, I've known someone who like graduated college, mm-hmm. but throughout her entire life, she like had a guidance counselor, and like mm-hmm. she was always told what to do next. Yeah. But once she had the freedom of doing whatever, she kind of like broke down. Yeah. And that's, um, yeah, that's that's definitely an issue because you know you go through school and you go through you know growing up from age. You know, so like whatever. from kindergarten, Five. first grade. Yeah, da, da, da. you know exactly what's coming next. Yeah. I graduated high school, and you know, for me, for my choice, I was like, the next thing I'm gonna do is college. Yeah. Some people it's different, but you know, there's always that choice after. But when you get into you know the quote unquote real world, yeah, um, get a job. Yeah, like life. what? What after, he, right after high school? Yeah, comes the real world. Exactly. Yeah. You know, for some for some people that's it, and you know, and you know they're. They don't know what to do, and that's 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 actually the person I'd love to work with. You know, someone so just out of school, just someone out of someone coming out of school structure, so yeah, out y- of structure. Younger, younger people, people, young younger people. You know, yeah. I'm not I'm not taking my services away from older individuals because right. it could be you know a woman who or a man who's retiring and doesn't know what to do. Well, who do you think you relate to the most? I definitely relate with. Are like the younger generations. What's that age range? You think? Um, I'm thinking. Would you think like, eighteen to twenty five, or like twenty five to thirty? Eighteen to like thirty. Eighteen so, to thirty. Yeah, yeah eighteen okay. to thirty. Because, I feel like that that age range, you know, it's it's different for yeah. the people thirty and up. It's it's it was a different world growing up. Yeah. You know, you know like growing up in I grew up in the '90s. You know, I I was. You know, I, I like to say I was lucky enough not to grow up with cell phones, right? Yeah. Now yeah. every every you go to kids nowadays, they all, all have phones. a cell phone, yep. all, tablets. Yeah, you they all know where each tablets. other are. It's crazy. I know exactly where like people are. Yeah. You see less and less yeah. activity, like outside activities, like riding bikes. Exactly. And before it was roller skating, yeah. random things like that, but now you just don't see any of it. <laughs> yeah. Causing trouble. Yeah. <laughs> causing trouble. <laughs> but that's, you know, the causing trouble is life, le- life lessons. It's yeah. true. Yeah. You that know, I got in some trouble when I was when I was young, but it taught me some good lessons. Now kids yeah. are like, you know, I... I just want to yeah, watch YouTube. They, they, yeah, they they get a, like a Watch little, me do this unboxing video. Yeah, they get a little <laughs> flick from another kid, and they're like, oh... Oh, I think the worst thing I did when I was a kid is uh, break a window with a BB gun. Yeah, you know, I, you know, having a BB gun as a kid is the worst thing ever. Like, <laughs> I would get my cousin because he was 18 at the time. I think I was like 15 or 14. Mm-hmm. I was just going around car windows and busting them, and it just took one little BB to break them. Yeah, it's it crazy. Was shattered. I was like, oh god. And like, no, well, other than the crazy thing, I remember mm-hmm. I think I was in the in the third grade. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I did, but I remember I got stabbed in the chest with a pencil. Yeah. Oh god. What the it, hell? it was just. This, I have a story about that too. It's like a crazy kid. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even crazy. I think like we were just like two guys. It was me and this other dude. Mm-hmm. We were just like joining on each other, and I guess it got too personal. He just grabbed his pencil and went, wham. Mm, that yeah. hurts. And yeah, it hurt. So I remember I looked. I looked up. Pulled out my shirt. Yeah. I peeled the uh, the lead. Oh god. Out of my chest. Yeah. But then I feel like today, like someone would have got sued, all yeah. that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, that yeah. that was my fault. I think I went too personal. Yeah. So it's it's a personal lesson. So I have this scar right here. Uh huh. Which in March I got it removed, but I got stabbed by a girl in high in middle school. Stabbed like a with, with a, a knife? pen. Oh, no, with fuck. a pen. Oh, wow. So same kind of thing, but the pen tip, so like the clicky pen. Yeah. Hit my bone and broke off in my arm. What the fuck? So, and that pen tip, since it didn't get infected or anything, the doctor said it was fine. I didn't yeah. realize it was in there until after it healed over because it itched. Now it itched and I feel it. Wait, wow. the pen tip? Yeah, the tip, the silver part of a clicky pen. Yeah. 
You know, like you click it down, and there's like there. that silver. It it's broke off like, the pen. Yeah, it's probably yeah, like. I could show you, but no, we don't. Yeah, no, I always need to have a pen to show. Yeah, but um, I thought it was. I thought it was like a, a ballpoint pen. It's just nah, like it was, a ball. It's, it's probably like a. Cool Even though, like all pens have, they have the ink cartridge, which is a plastic piece. Yeah, and then they have the tip that goes right into the plastic ink cartridge, oh. and then there's the ball. Yeah, so okay. so that that it's probably that, like half an inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. yeah, half an inch. So, so that was stuck in my arm. For probably, I don't know. Yeah, what'd you do to her? 10 plus years. <laughs> it was literally, no, that's the worst part. Because it was literally like, I was talking to my friend, I was like, yo, hey, laugh at her and pretend I'm telling you a secret. Wow. Just it. He was just like, oh my God, are you serious? And, and she was pointing just like, at her, like, you talking about her? Yeah, yeah. And he, it was like one of those things, like stupid middle school stuff. <laughs> and she came at me, and I, I, I probably give it, she probably was just joking around. She didn't mean to do it, but I like, I like putting my arm up because she like came at me <laughs> and I put my arm up and it like hit me and I don't even think she realized it did it until she probably tried to write with the pen. Do you still talk to that person today? Uh no, nah, oh, no. Nah, she's uh, she went to high school with me and she was she was she's living her living her life. I didn't feel like uh, <laughs> oh. I didn't feel like everyone says that. That like, relationship is over. Yeah. Like because well, I kept the pen tip, so I got surgery <laughs> because I'm also a climber, a rock climber, and I was using my wrist a lot and it actually put pressure on a tendon and split the tendon in half oh shit. so that. yeah so and it the tendon just started opening and opening more and more and more and the doctor was really cool he was like well you can like wait either get it fixed now or like wait till it hurts too much <laughs> that's and i was like horrible cool. this is <laughs> yeah take it out he was a very yeah. he was a sport he was a sports doctor so he was more he was definitely like let's keep you on the field until right you know yo, you twist your ankle I'll run it out that's you know <laughs> But, ten uh, years left, left that thing. So yeah, yeah. ten rubber plus tussin. years. He's rubber tussin. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thumb it everything. Up. Well, whoever did uh, it, you know, changed Keith's life. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I got that surgery back in March, and I'm just now getting into it. But yeah, and now I feel you like learn. everyone has like a pen tip story of like, oh, I got like every time I tell people, oh, I got this lead in I my don't hand. Think so. You don't uh, have one? I got. Well, I had a couple pencils going, like, you know, in between mm-hmm. whatever this part of your can the is webbing. Called. Yeah. Had a couple of those. Now, I think the worst is in here. And it's like, oh, it hurts. But was that from you doing that little stabbing game? No. Like, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would always stick my hand in, in my desk. You know how we had the desk, uh, whatever. Uh, like, you had your storage yeah, right yeah, under yeah, your yeah, desk. Yeah. So I never would look under. i just stick yeah. my hand in there. Oh. Boom. It always stab Blind. me. See, they don't do that for kids now. They need, they need, uh, they need glass tops. Dude. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm, say, what? I'm just kidding, but it's a lawsuit. They can stab their hand in school. They sue the school. Yeah. <laughs> I think once we got into high school, we don't have those anymore. No, you have just your, like that one flat yeah. top. You, I know what you, you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I remember what you're talking about too. Yeah. But that's because you bring your your you'll bring your binders and everything with you. Back then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. You have a locker. Back then that was your locker. Yeah, yeah. Under exactly. Your desk. But yeah, so that's my age in twenty like eighteen to eighteen to thirty, because I feel like in that age, you know, we grew up they 30 and up, and it's different because everyone, you know, they're 30-year-olds in college right now trying to, you know, make make something and, you know, following their dreams and stuff. But in the most part, in our age, in this age range, age range. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, know, I, you get out of college, a college degree isn't what it used to be. I, I personally believe in, in habits. Like, a thing I tell, like, my clients who as a personal trainer is, like, it takes, like, 90 days to actually, like, develop a habit. Mm-hmm. Oh, and like going back to that stabbing thing, <laughs> like that was in the the third grade, the, my pencil thing, yeah. like getting stabbed in the chest. But then I, I recall when I was 18, 19, I was a manager of a restaurant mm-hmm. and one of my employees, because I was the shift manager at the time, yeah. he stabbed me with a, with a fork. What the fuck? What are you um, working with? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, that maybe, with? Maybe, <laughs> no, it was one of my employees. I, I think what happened was like I was, I was just talking to this girl. And I think he had a crush on her. Like, she was, she was like, one of the regulars. You had some wow. spiteful friends. Yeah. I think so. And I just remember, like, you, you, you can't be talking to her like was that, Was it a plastic man. fork? Yeah, it was a plastic oh, fork. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, like, a, a, a yeah, metal fork. Regardless, yeah. the action. <laughs> because the he, action of stabbing someone, it doesn't, like, she I remember, shouldn't take I'm, lightly. I'm just, like, facing him head on, like, whoa, whoa, calm down. Like, this, this is between me and her. But how do you stab you with, the, like, a, like, this or, like? This up motion, down, oh, up down yeah, motion. It was intentional. <laughs> and then <laughs> he had a metal fork. He would have gone for yeah. it. Yeah, because it, it broke. Like, because uh, me and him were just having a conversation. Right? I don't know. It's too small. I, I was working out that time. <laughs> he just grabbed it, boom, and it, we. I just like I look at him and I look at the fork. It broke in front of me, mm. and I'm just thinking like, 
what? Did you what, really what, just try to say Yeah, that? like, <laughs> what, what are you, are you, what right are you thinking? Like, yeah. <laughs> what did he say after? He was like, uh, that was, uh, this is awkward now. I mean, this is kind of bad, but then we kind of ended up going to the bathroom and then we kind of like, oh, shit. Went oh, to the body. Went to the body, yeah. man. That's that. See, I grew up like that, yeah. too. <laughs> See, like, do, you, do you still talk to that person? Or nah, no, no, no. That was, that was before I went to the military, so I was okay. just like, nope, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't be messing around with that no more. Yeah, went to the body. I remember that. Yeah. That was middle school for me. You, just go you guys still did it too? And did it at Newport? School. Yeah, Newport. Yeah. I don't think you ever Everybody I think you did. probably did it once maybe freshman year and like after that it will get too serious. Yeah. Yeah, see I didn't do it I didn't do it too much cuz uh people got inside me. I was I've never been a fighter. I yeah. Mean. But hey, you're James, tall. James, James is a scrappy little kid. Really? <laughs> yeah. He 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 show some people up for sure. That's funny. He, well, grew, he grew up in the in the hard Philippines. You know. Oh, Ray because Mundo's brother. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's my. He's been my best friend since probably sixth grade. That's cool. It's yeah. funny because whenever I hang out with Raimundo, James is always just like to himself. Yeah. Quiet. He's a quiet kid. Yeah. But if you get if you get man when he get when he would get mad, it was hard to bring him down. I mean, not not to like throw shade on him though, but I feel like he's the kind of guy that would need life coaching. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Um, because coming from the older side, like yeah. me hanging out with his older brother. And, like, me coming over to the house, see how he is. Like, I understand. Like, I'm pretty sure he has, like, a cool, like, yeah. social life. But he would never show it in front of, like, me and John. Yeah. Yeah, he is different now. He's, I mean, he's, I don't know when the last time you met saw him, but he's a personal trainer now. Oh, is he? Yeah. He, I, I heard he's, he's pretty, like, Jack now. He's, he is Jack. Yeah. He used to be. So we, it's funny, all throughout high school, I was 6'2". He was probably, like, I don't know, 5'6", so really? 7". I thought he was taller than that. But know. we were always the same weight. So uh, he was just a short little fat chubby yeah. kid, and <laughs> I was just this tall. I was taller, so the weight dispersed better, <laughs> and uh, and we always lifted the same and all that stuff. And then I guess it was shortly after high school. He kept going. He kept going, and yeah. he like cut hard. Like yeah. he looked. He's like bodybuilder style. Oh now. wow! Yeah, he's like a little meatball. But right. It's crazy too. Like your brother Sean, he came over to the gym. He's he's like six five, right? <clears throat> six. Four. Six four. Damn. Yeah. But he's two forty. Yeah, he's two forty. Jesus. I would have never thought he was two forty. How much do you think I am? I think you're like two fifteen. Yeah. Two twenty. Two thirty. Two thirty. Okay. Okay. About six two. Mm-hmm. Maybe just because you're tall. I don't hang around that many tall got people. Big thighs. And nice bubble butt. Okay. That's crazy. That you, makes sense. I weigh more than you. <laughs> That's crazy. And you're like five. Five nine. Okay. But it's yeah. all the way the way the weight is dispersed though, because you I mean you don't it's not like you're like. I used to be heavier. I used to my heaviest yeah. was two sixty. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. get that a lot as a as a life lifestyle coach? What, like weight issues? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's definitely that's because weight. It's like a big self esteem. It's a big self esteem thing. Yeah. You drop confidence, self esteem, social life. If you, you know, oh my friends are all going to the beach, but I want to go because I'm not comfortable with right. myself as body image. Taking off the shirt. Yeah. When did you learn to be comfortable with like? I guess uh, just being around people, being yourself. Well, but, how, how so? Like, I guess being a life coach, don't you have to be comfortable meeting new people and yeah, and um, just being like, you don't want to come off as shy and be like, hold on, what, what yeah. is this guy doing? You know. I like, guess. I mean, that kind of came naturally for me, right? And I thank my mom for that. I mean, you yeah. met my mom. Keith is a social know. butterfly. Your yeah. mom is very yeah. friendly. Definitely thank my mom for that. I definitely am not afraid to be the center of attention in okay. the room. I definitely don't. It took me a while to to get used to purposeful center for attention. Yeah. I think it's different. Mm-hmm. Like if you know the funny guy in the room, right? Yeah, they're not they're they're the center of attention because he's funny. But if everyone's looking at me because I'm doing a speech or something, mm-hmm. it's different. It's a very different type of center of attention. So you're like a goofball. Yeah, or like, you're just like well, a that's how I that's how back. I always was when I was younger. Okay, so um, you find it harder to do a speech in front of everybody. Uh, well, I, I've learned and, and right. uh, but it compose that was, yourself type. Yeah, of thing. it was definitely it was definitely hard to do to do that. Be the center of attention in a in a like on purpose. Okay, yeah. you know, like everyone's coming to me for like if I do a talk or if I do a group session or I hold uh, an event or something. Everyone's looking at me because I'm leading it. Yeah. It's like different. Like yeah. when yeah. I would go to the parties, like we were saying at New Year's, and I would do a speech, we were all drunk, so it was a little different. <laughs> yeah. But like, and I, no, one, no one expected it. 
So I was just like, hey, everyone. Like, yeah. What would you say in your speech? Do you remember? Um, <laughs> well, I would, yeah. I would, uh, thank you, thank you all thank for, you for coming. Thank you for coming. I really enjoyed like having you all here. Everyone looks great and let's get fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> like like it's almost New Year's and this new, this past year has been great. Let's make the next one even better and you know just kind of generic yeah. stuff. But it was always just, I really I and that was kind of doing doing those those like that's like your authentic self type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and I really enjoy that and I think that's kind of what brought me into life coaching and um doing health coaching and my life my lifestyle stuff um it's because it just comes naturally to me because you you have you know your like own self-awareness how hard is it for you to find or help get someone else to find that their true self um and i i i thank my training for this because i went through a certificate program and stuff and some people don't do certificate programs for lifestyle yeah. li life and health coaching um but that was my problem was that i always thought life coaching and stuff like this was this kind of weird thing that like like who does this like i don't know like well to just to take that back i remember you told me like you got inspired or you always thought that i would be a good life coach yeah but then you always keep saying that it's kind of weird i'm like Am I weird now? No, like no, that's no. me being self conscious. <laughs> like, damn, I've been weird this whole time. No, it's like it takes a certain person, and it takes ambition because it's not okay. something that you can just say, "I'm gonna do a job interview and I become a life coach." Yeah, you know, it's you build it yourself. Yeah, and you built so much for yourself, like you know, sumo lifts. I'm wearing this shirt. Right? So, so if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, where your life coach? How do they do that? Um. So most of my stuff right now, uh, because, you know, I'm kind of just starting out. Right. Um, still working another job, and eventually 2020. My goal is 2021. I'm going to yeah. quit my job and do this full time. Do it full time because I really don't feel, I feel like with something like this, like a business. Yeah. If you put 100% into it, you get you get rewards back, right? If you put If you put everything into your own business, like you can't. You can't half-ass it. If you, yeah, exactly. If you half-ass it. It's you're gonna get half ass results. So right now you're just practicing. Stuff I'm practicing like that. building foundations, building your craft. Uh, but I am getting, I am taking clients and I'm doing doing it. But I'm doing it in a way that is manageable for me. I don't want to sit here and overload be, yourself at once. Yeah, overload myself so that I'm not a hundred percent for a client like you. Or but right now you're just do, doing mostly phone calls, or can you yeah. do one on ones with people? So uh, yeah, so phone calls. So right now, so the way people would get in touch with me right now, I'm doing more referrals or, yeah. you know, or even, you know, things like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, promo. Promo, yeah. <laughs> yeah promotion. Um, and I'm doing things like talks and, um, but I would do that and then we would do an, like I would get maybe an email. I did, Like I said before, you can't really force somebody into this, right? Right. Yeah. You can't, you can't say, you know, I know a friend who like is really struggling in their life and like you should call them i would tell you yeah have them to have, have them, them reach call out them. reach out to me because yeah. if they're uncomfortable and i reach out to them that's kind of like pushing it a little bit well, pushing it and yeah. it could be like kind of like rude in a way yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i understand yeah i mean to give you my perspective on like the military part mm -hmm. like i know there's a lot of people who i've like served with mm -hmm. who are depressed, anxious, but they'll never show it. Yeah. And what I've learned from what, I, what I've been doing, I've, I set up like this free Sunday group, mm -hmm. like free workout. Yeah. And the one thing that I learned from all the guys that I've been working out with that Sunday, they're, they've all went through very traumatic or life-changing events, mm -hmm. whether it was a divorce, near-death experience, mm -hmm. or like rock bottom experience yeah and i think at that point it was just they they didn't know where to turn to and i gave them structure on just how to work out and then it eventually turned out that i think one thing i want to do in, in sumo lifts too was to be a mentor or a father figure for people yeah because i learned that i had a better foundation when i was in boot camp than most of the other guys yeah because I saw a lot of guys at 18 getting, like, married or engaged. Yeah. Then they get their Dear John letter, and then they start crying. Yeah. And I'm just like, like, me being a man, it's like, I don't like, understand man it. The fuck up. Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> move on. There's, like, yeah. other girls in the world. But then that's, like, me not being empathetic. Right. Yeah. And be like, 
oh, okay. I mean, I, I can understand. Like, he, he probably thought that the military was going to give him a job, money, and then shelter. Yeah. And then he was going to give that to his girl. But, but I feel like you do pretty good because uh, just like with me, my personal, you know, my sister. Yeah. Um, like, I, you know, now I just want to go to the gym. And then just they might, you know, people are like, why? I'm like, well, I just talk to Brian. He just listens. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Hell on me. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you do pretty good at it. You know, you just listen and say what you feel like you can say. Yeah. Because I feel like that's, that's just like my tip for you in business wise. It's always perfecting your craft. And, mm-hmm. like, it took me years of talking to many people yeah. and, like, making a platform like this mm-hmm. to figure out how do I talk to a certain person. Mm-hmm. You ever feel like you said the wrong thing to somebody? Like, oh, damn, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's always but then that. There's, always, there's always a but fine line. From that. Yeah. Well, but how do you know? Like, like you see in their face, facial expression, like, or, like, how do you know you went too far? Um, for me personally, I just have to be authentic to myself. Right. And I know me, like being the, the masculine type, mm-hmm. like for me, I just got to be blunt. Right. Like I know I, like you met Robbie, right? Yeah. Robbie and I, we, we always, whenever we talk to each other, especially when it comes to business, we kind of do like a he- double team attack okay. because he comes off like soft and passive and yeah. I come off really hard. Okay. So whenever I talk to someone, I'm just really blunt. Right. And that's just how I, I am. Yeah. Because I just like to take action. Like, if I want to start a podcast, I'll start a fucking podcast. Yeah. If I want to invite you to something, I'll do it. Like, whether I just know yeah. you for two seconds or I've known you all my life and we just haven't met in a while. But with Robbie, he's which just is, like... Which is not a bad thing. You know? Yeah, it's not a bad thing. thing, but I learned how to deal with it. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to try to fake it like, hey, I'm going to be that guy. Because, like, the biggest thing I have an issue with when it comes to business is when you ever see those commercials where it's just like, hey, do you have da 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 da? Or are you having pain with whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or are you having issues with this? Yeah. Let me help you. Like, you can tell by, like, it's just yeah, my, my tone in my voice. Fake. It's fake. Yeah. yeah. But for me, it's just like, it's either keep it moving or whatever. Yeah. Like, I can, I, you, you can tell with me that I'm authentic. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to speak to you from my heart. I mean, some, some people don't take it yeah, my, that's my what way. I say. Some people are like, Yo, what kind of attitude is that? Like, right. You know, I guess you just learn. That's how you learn, though. Yeah, because yeah, one thing in business that I can help you, too, is like you can't sell to the unsellable. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was talking about with people who you can't force some, something on somebody. Right. right. But you can always pitch. That's you my can thing. Always pitch. Always and pitch. Always pitch. So I went, I, I do a lot of networking events, and it, okay. that was really awkward. The yeah. first networking event I went ever went to was like I hate network networking events. Like to be it's honest. like really weird. You know, have you ever they're been all fake. No, I never. Yeah, so like networking stuff and stuff yeah, like that. So yeah. So for never. those of you who don't know, networking events is where people go to a place to meet people who also need something. Yeah, but you're basically talking to other entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like you like need those, to talk to people uh, who are in your what industry. Are those called? triangle schemes that uh, uh, pyramid yeah pyramid so there will be yeah. so the one i went to was actually really nice it was a it was a breakfast uh it was with a group that kn- all know each other very well and i was subbing in for a friend um because he like pays for it it was very expensive oh um but um it was these people who like one was like for example one was a realtor mm-hmm. and one okay. was a construction guy okay so the construction guy says i'm building places in these areas if you want area, places in these areas, you let me know, and I'll sell it to you first. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's the type I like, but I've been to other ones where it's like a little happy hour, and you got to walk into, hi, how you doing? What do you do? Like, yeah. And yeah, it's like super kinda, like, yeah, yeah. how can I help you? Because some right? people blow you off like, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Right. It's very awkward. It's very yeah. forced. Um, but, I mean, networking events are important when you're trying to sell your business. Yeah. Well, let me ask you. So this is a big thing that I have a personal issue with, and this is like almost like my mission in, in life, is like identity politics. Okay. Because like as soon as you say your title, mm-hmm. saying like, oh, I'm a life coach, yeah. I'm going to already have like assumptions about you. Yeah. Or I'm a personal trainer, and that's my, my biggest one. Mm-hmm. Because one thing I always wanted to say, like as a personal trainer, to me, what I've always gotten is that you're an airhead. Yeah. Like, you're just a meathead. As a life, oh, as a personal trainer? As a personal trainer. Why would you think that? Because, like, I've hung around a lot of people who are in the industry for, like, bodybuilding. Yeah. And they're just muscle heads. Right. So they're not that smart. Mm-hmm. They know how to lift. They know how to control their bodies, but they're not that smart. Right. So for yeah. me, it was always, like, I don't want to be put in that realm. 
So I always had to like do something different to figure that out. Yeah. Or like, I really like being a bro. So I just like, I like to drink and party. Yeah. But also those people aren't deemed smart either. So I'm just like, I am smart. So I'm not going to, I'm going to do all the things that are bro or like personal train, but I'm not going to, I'm still going to be smart too. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to put me in a box. That's one thing I always hate. I have a problem with that too. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm just... You know, I, I went to Towson, I drank, had a good time, and then people always assume I'm this type of way, but I'm not. Yeah. What, you know, you, what I, would they assume? Like, the, when I say I'm a rock climber, oh, you're like a hippie? Thing. Yeah. Oh, you know? Okay. Like, See? So you're yeah. like connected with the earth. And kind of same thing with me, because I cook, and they're like, oh, well, you smoke a lot of cigarettes, you, you know, stuff. Because that's, yeah. that's what they're known for. Yeah, it's, a, stero- it's a stereotype. Yeah. yeah. Which, and that's something I really... I, I do I, I I struggle with you know if I say you know I'm a life coach or I'm a health coach or a lifestyle coach or they're like oh are you gonna like fix me yeah <laughs> you gonna do like, no yeah no I'm not yeah. fixing that's why I like I'm not gonna go to people and say hey you seem like you need some coaching I would be like you know somebody have them message me because but I, I think too is just like coming at it in a different way. Either just trying to befriend them. Like, if you mm-hmm. know somebody has issues, come at them and, like, just like a normal person. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's how business should always be done. It should be. Yeah. Well, like, I, treat them as a person. And that's one not. of the reasons why I love the life lifestyle and health coach, the world that I'm in, is because it is it is a very personal thing. Yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're going to call me and we're going to check check marks off a list. Right. Yeah. Some people do it that way. Oh, well, and that's what I was going to ask. Like, for me... Dealing with a lot of people in sales, Mm -hmm. like they know how to read body language. And if they can't see you in person and read you, like how you're like facing them, they don't want to talk to you. Okay. Like not about anything personal. Yeah. Like, because I I work with a couple people who um, sell cars. Okay. And all they do, like, like a couple guys told me their tactics. Mm -hmm. One thing I learned was as a a car salesman, they're going to always offer you water. Whether you choose to like accept their water is how they know you're they're warming up to them, huh? Because it's like, oh, here, here's the water. So it's like I'm giving you something for free. Yeah. Now, I I guess I feel like I owe you something. Yeah. Or there's always yes and no. there's for always me, a psychology about it. For me, it's like I don't know because. I, I, for me, I just say no all the time. I don't know. Just, <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm thing, saying. Yeah. That's good because now you're not you're not open to them. Kind of in a way, yeah. Because I'm like no. I don't know you yet. Like, but like, all right, think about this. Think about this. So think about like sex. Yeah. If you get a girl to say yes to it's something, spicy. like, hey, do you want, do you want some water? <laughs> do you want something to drink? I guess. It's you, one you warm, yes. You're warming it up. So yeah. as soon as you say more yes, it'd be like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got this. <laughs> oh, you want to go to the room now? She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, me too. <laughs> I mean, it's all, everything was consensual. <laughs> But then, that's just like that sales tactic. That's one thing I learned. It's always a tactic to everything. No, yeah, yeah. But it's like it's it's understanding human psychology, and like if you understand people, like you kind of understand how they're gonna work. It makes sense because when I just bought the car I drive now, uh, we're there for all day. We're Did you take trip. a water? No, the guy. <laughs> I guess every I don't know. He was saying every other Friday or every Friday they order lunch for the whole uh, team, uh-huh. oh. and that I came in that Friday and it, coincidentally they were ordering lunch. He's like, "Yeah, lunch. you want a lunch? Free food." Yeah, so it was a Subway. They ordered Subway, and I got a box. It was like two sandwiches, a bag of cookies, bag of chips, and like a water. Man, they're yeah. sweet. And he's like, "You work. sure? You sure you don't want?" He's like, "It's a free box." I'm like, uh, "All right, whatever." Yeah, took it and then you know I got it. I was like, "All right, now nah, I have to buy the car." <laughs> <laughs> he got you because he got right me. Like, I was full. I'm yeah. like. This is pretty Good. It's not bad. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah there's wow. always the psychology of everything. And so with what I do, it's <laughs> what's your psychology? There's what's there your is strength? a psychology, yeah. there's a method, right? Because I can't come I'm not gonna come to you and be like be like, I'm not gonna look at you and say, I don't know, uh, you look insecure. Let's make you uninsecure right now, right? Then you're gonna be like, what? like what? Like you can't. You got to get better tactics. Yeah. Like what? You can't. Like no, I'm not gonna do that. It's a, it's an automatic. Like your brain is like, like whoa, like this is too much. You know, like damn, right? But if I come at you and be like, hey, what's up, man? How yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, I, like I think your biggest thing is like, hey, you want a beer? Yeah. <laughs> Just like, boom. Yo, that'd be your Speaking best tactic. Of beer. <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be perfect. Don't, don't judge me. I drink fast. Hey, that's cool. I used to be like that. Too. You want to? You want a sour? I do. I want to yeah. try this. I Fancy tried sour. This he he did drink this uh, Maryland Brewery Jesus True Christ. Respite Brown what Nut that, Brown a, Ale. A, a liter of beer. A this pint. is a oh, pint. pint. Yeah, oh, this Jesus. is. Yeah, this that's was this was twenty dollars for four oh, bucks for four beers. Look yeah, fun. yeah, it's different. A but I do <laughs> it's a like, hobby. I like <laughs> brown brown ales. So this is a sour. Let's see that face. It's pretty good. Okay. Mm. This is Burley Oak, my favorite brewing company. Make this, the best sours. This is like uh it's like an IPA, but like sour candy. Oh, okay. Hits you in the back That's of the pretty cheeks. pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So wait, this is from uh Ocean City? So this is Berlin. So it's on fifty and it's right it's uh, right off fifty in Berlin, Maryland. In Baltimore? In Berlin, Maryland. Oh Ocean that? it's close to Ocean Maryland, City. Ocean City, okay. Oh, yeah, Route okay. fifty is the way to Ocean City yeah. and Right off Route 50 is Berlin, so it's a small town, and that's one of the things I love about breweries is that they're bringing out these small towns, you know, because they need large areas, and it's cheap in small towns. Yeah. So, yeah. like... I was wondering, is it, is it a white people thing that, like, talk numbers instead of street names? Do you know, <laughs> do you know numbers? We were talking about... Num- we were talking about... What do you places? mean? It's, like, street numbers? Yeah, like, Route 1 and, like, Route 50. Like, I don't yeah, really yeah, know Yeah, yeah, a lot that. of people, like... Yeah, like, Georgia hey. Avenue is 97. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I just people, say George Avenue. Yeah, people. Somebody told me ninety seven. We'll take route ninety seven. Like, what the fuck yeah, is like, ninety seven? I just know three fifty five. He was like ninety seven. Because when, well, when you hear Georgia, what do you what do you think of the main road? The, How many lanes? Uh, uh, three, four. It's three, four. It's yeah, four. Georgia goes all the way up to Route seventy. I know it goes down to Damascus, all the way down. It goes. It, I, the, I never the, took the, it further than that. Yeah, so the, Georgia goes from DC all the way up to Route seventy. Yeah, Which never. it turns into a two lane road. Let's really? take a break. Was... Uh, hey, do you get holes in your jeans? All like the time, me? man. <laughs> For sure. Like I get them like right between my crotch, like towards my like asshole, my taint. <laughs> your asshole, <laughs> right there, man. What is that area called between your nuts and gooch? Your... Yeah, it's gooch <laughs> taint. <the> worst. <laughs> all that. Um, I don't. Well, I don't get that anymore because now I wear barbell apparel jeans. They stretch. They come in a thirty-four length inseam. That's what I need. Perfect for the tall people. For the short people, we got to get our shit tailored. Hmm. Uh, use code Sumo Ten for ten percent off your next purchase, and you don't get more jeans anymore. That'd be nice to have. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna go it's get the only reason why I get new jeans. <laughs> it's for that hole. Thank you, Sumo Ten. That's it. So, uh, and I think um, perseverance and just my my biggest struggle as you know an extrovert, as someone who loves to talk to people, is finding those true friends. Right? Like yeah. I have a couple of good friends in my life. Yeah. Like, and you know some people have like groups of friends that they've been friends with forever. Lies. There's yeah. lies. Yeah. It's on Instagram. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, on, it's on MySpace. My top like... eight. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. I feel, but I feel like me and you have been friends for. 10 years? 15? You and me? Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's, it's very unique to find a friend, like friends that you stay friends with forever. And, and the, it's, uh, high school really hit me senior year. I'd go walk through the hallways. And, I, you know, I was kind of on the football team. I was having a good Just time. Just dap people up. Yeah, I'd dap people you're up. You know, yeah. I was, I was, the, I was a, the homecoming king. And oh, really? I was four That's years cool. in a row. Wow. Yeah, I was the only... I, was always... I, was, I felt like an asshole. I was the only homecoming winner for... My whole class. I was always nominated. I was so pissed. I would never win. Yeah, I until won the, every time. Yeah, until the, I don't know if you remember Sap. <laughs> yeah, I was pissed. You remember Sap? I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember Sap. Yeah, he, he was people. Funny. Yeah, people would just vote for him. Oh, just vote for Sap. Like, yeah, and I was yeah. pissed. I'm like, I actually want to win it. Like, but, fuck. <laughs> but Sap is funny. Yeah, Dude, butt cheeks. It was like, <laughs> I keep moving. <laughs> but but you what? I was, oh, you got it. it's, we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> it's a football thing. Yeah. Um, nah, but yeah. Freshman, sophomore, and junior, um, and senior year, I won every homecoming. That's crazy. It was awesome. I, I loved it. Didn't win, see, didn't win uh, prom king. Um, Who won prom king? king? Brian Ia. What about our year? Who won prom? I didn't go to prom. Me neither. Really? No. Yeah, I didn't go. Yeah. My prom was, uh, it's fine. I went to three proms, actually. Oh, shit. So, one with my brother's year. One with hmm. Ariel Grant. Uh, Is that who won uh, prom queen? No. But, uh... 
She was she was a girl football player at our school. Yeah, she still plays yeah. fucking she plays rugby. rugby. Yeah, she's yeah. a freaking boss. I just she's like on Facebook a lot now. And she's I see like her, yeah. more tough than I'll ever be. Yeah. Rugby is a hard sport. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's dangerous too because you don't wear no helmets. Yeah, and then I went with um, a girl named Christina the next year, and then I went with my high school girlfriend Courtney. Oh, don't listen to that, Amy. <laughs> 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 um, but. Um, so, yeah, but so in high school, so I was that kind of guy, you know, I go dap everyone up. Yeah. And then there'd be some days where I was like kind of tired and down and, you know, I'd put my headphones in and no one would say, what's up to me? Mm. I wouldn't, if I didn't say what's up to you, they didn't talk to me. That's weird. No, for me, it's always routine. Like someone would like get in my face and just like put their yeah. hand out. Yeah. yeah. See, and it would be rude for me to like, like not. Yeah. If I wasn't, if I put my head down and didn't say hi to anybody, no one would say hi to me. That's and that maybe. that was like a life changing moment where I was like, because James <clears throat> would, you know, and I had James, people like James and my friend Helen and, you know, a couple, couple people in high school, they would come up to me and it was like, how many friends do I have? Right. Okay. Rather than acquaintances. Ah, uh, okay. I see. You know, people would just pass by. People, well, like the thing about that to me in my head right now, it's like everybody's all about like power moves. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all about status. Like, whoever has, like, the most power, like, especially in high school, is the people that you want to surround yourself with. Yeah. Or the people who want to, like, are attracted to. What do you mean, like, most popular, I guess? Yeah, so, like, if you're, like, the quarterback of the football team, everybody's going to tap you yeah, up, yeah, regardless yeah. if mm-hmm. you want to talk to them or not. Right. Well, see, they just I, see, talk my to thing you. was, even though, you know, to stay humble, you know, I was kind of that guy, you know, I was... Nah, but then if if they didn't if they didn't dap you up, then that's that's the thing. That's See, the what position did you play in football? Tight end and linebacker. End? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so you had the size for it, man. Huh? Yeah, I don't see one. Yeah, no, I'm saying you, you had the, the size. size for it. Yeah, I wanted to go to college for it, but I hurt my back. So hmm. um, that was also a sad moment in my life when, so you, when you hear your back? my senior year, every single person, every senior on the football team went somewhere for college. Oh wow, shit! Except for football? For, me. <laughs> for football? Uh, most of them for football. Two of them for baseball, I believe. Oh, okay. Where uh, the Ryan Ryan Ferguson? Ryan Ferguson was at Bryant University. Is that y- yeah. your he, year? Yep. Does he still play football? No, nah, he stopped. Hmm. Yeah, he doesn't play anymore. Most of them got hurt. Oh wow! Yeah. Did he? Brian I got hurt. He does. Uh, he's. Oh, uh, he went to school for football. Yeah, Shenandoah University. Oh, did sure. uh Did Ryan get hurt? Ryan did not get hurt. He just stopped. He just stopped. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no, he. I don't know why he stopped. I think I thought I think. His plan was to go European leagues or something. It's super hard to get into the NFL. The mm. only person I know who stayed with it and is still trying to get in the NFL is Joel. Joel yeah. Is yeah, yeah, I see him a lot. He's yeah. trying to get into it. His video is frustrating. Yeah. Me. But he's doing well. <laughs> good, good luck, Joel. <laughs> why why yeah. do they frustrate you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just every time I see a video of him, it's just running and it's just ripped. And I'm just like, all right, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. Like, you won. We get it. We get it. Like okay. Kevin Hart shit, you won already. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's no, but he's doing his, uh, you know, he's doing what he needs to do to get in the NFL, which yeah. I really respect that. He's, he's the only one that I know who kept with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. you look at all the other football players, he's hungry. like, like Noel, Noel and Joel. He's a chef now. He's it. Yeah. He, he cooks Eagles. for like he's the Eagles, yeah. Eagles, yeah. Which is mind blowing. It's awesome. Like yeah. it's so cool. I didn't even know he had like a thing for cooking. Yeah. Me neither. Like he was guy. playing football and I guess he just liked the cooking better. Yeah. So like then that's so my dad he said that to me. So I got a couple scholarships in, in high school and I could have gone somewhere, but my dad comes up to me and he's like, You can either play football for two or three years. You know, have time of your life. Right. Yeah. It'll be fun, you know. But you'll get that one hit eventually. Yeah. That one hit in your Career back. Career ending. And it's going to screw you because I already had a herniated disc. I had side sciatic and nerve damage. And, and But I still, I was pushing through it. I could still play. And he was like, you can, you can play. It'll be the best years, of some, some may say, of your life. You right, know? right. And then you'll get hurt. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then he was like, or you can pick your kids up when you're older. Facts. Because my dad made that decision and played. He played? He played, yeah. He, he played hurt. basketball. Okay. He got hurt. Now he, and he like couldn't, like he, he, to this day, stretches three times a day, like like won't even jump down a flight, of, like two Damn. stairs because he's he scared his back will hurt. Yeah, like, that's crazy. And he's still yeah. a very active person. Like he walks more than I, anyone I know. He, wa- he takes the subway to D.C. every morning, but Shit. that's like tons of yard work growing up. He was the dad that, 
Then we came home and we go do a side job. Who would chop all that firewood in your backyard? We we did. Yeah, my dad did oh, it, shit. and I did it. It was a ton of it. firewood. Yeah, we have yeah. a ton of we chop our own wood. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Guns strong. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, the trees in the backyard? Uh, no, the firewood. The trees in the backyard we took down. We actually chopped up one of those trees. How long did that take you? A long time because those trees. Were, dense. were you ever like, I don't want to do this? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we ended up getting so somebody. So one of the trees, we it was way too much. Yeah. We were like. We were told the guys we were like, "Oh, drop the big stuff and take the little stuff." And mm-hmm. they dropped. It was so much wood, and we just couldn't. We didn't have the space for it, so we ended up getting some people. My mom knew from Southern Maryland, uh, and they came in with like a wood chopper, yeah. like a hydraulic the wood chip, chopper. Yeah, and those. man, that thing was. It, it was chops, we, chops through everything. Yeah, it was just. Yep. And it was like crazy. And we loaded up their truck and their trailer, and they were like some family that lived off the land and yeah, didn't yeah. have electricity and so they probably their appreciated that it. yeah they yeah, loved it yeah and they were great um but uh, I, I bet you now you're like damn we should never get that firewood away you can you can for sure last winter wasn't that bad it was supposed to be a terrible winter but i remember um, the, uh we, i used to go to well i still do um my old boss his name is mr moore yeah we, i use his pool a lot but um he has a fire pit back there yeah he had a lot of wood i think he had um a pallet. I don't know what it's called. You buy a pallet of wood. It's yeah. Like, you, whatever, whatever the name is for. But it was a lot of wood. Yeah. We went through it through like one summer. Yeah. And he bought it for like it was enough for him to last for like two or three years. <laughs> and we went through it in one summer. He's like, Well, we had that fire pick yeah. in our backyard. So there's some pieces of wood when you're chopping your own wood. And you don't have a hydraulic press at hand. You're doing it by axe and you're doing it by um, with a sledgehammer and a. Splitter, I think it's called. Splitter, yeah, whatever. I forget what it's called too. Um, but so you're doing that. But when you hit a tough knot, oh, no, it'll so suck. knots in yeah. the tree. You know, you never. Sometimes it just out. doesn't work. So we just sometimes leave those things and we just burn them in the fire pit. I mean, you've been to our fires. So yeah, like they're just. You just get one gigantic piece and just yeah, throw, you it just in throw it in there. Throw it on. You gotta make sure it's hot enough first, though. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So so Dana, Dana's number four, uh, and these are all none in uh, any specific order, <laughs> but um. <laughs> They know you number four. Yeah, and Sean, Sean would be in there. Your last Sean. You know, I grew, grew up with Sean, and he, you know, he was the one, the one who took the brunts. He's the older brother. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the rules changed after we came up. Like, <laughs> Sean, Sean couldn't leave the house and after ten or whatever. Really? And, what? and then when we grew up, we were like, oh yeah, I want to go out at midnight. Fuck it, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like we were. It was like. I so like, I heard that that's a rule thing. Like, I don't have kids, but it's like. Once you have kids and they, when they grow up to adults, like your first kid will always get like all the tough rules. Then first that, kid, all, you could talk, ask Sean, he hated it. Like, yeah. It was like he always got the in trouble first. He always all this I'm stuff. I'm a baby of my uh, family, so I think. feel like I got that too. Yeah. I, I felt like I got in trouble first, but. You're not the oldest. Angela no, is. Angela is, yeah. but, you know, me and her are so the oldest. So do you think Angela had it harder growing up? Yeah, because she will always get in trouble. Yeah. Always. Like, if she, and especially if we did something wrong, she would get in trouble for yeah. it. Like, why did you let them do that? So, like, oh, growing, home, growing up 12. with Sean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, growing up with Sean is my older brother. Like, both Sean and Dana, they, I mean, Sean, his, he always, you know, always know how to have fun. Yeah. Our curfew was like six o'clock. Because my daddy, he, he's like a diesel fanatic. So, yeah. you always drive diesel trucks and you can hear his truck coming down from the street. <laughs> so, for a minute, we had to sit quiet. Like, Oh, that's a truck. All right, we had to dip home, <laughs> and we had to go behind the neighborhood so he wouldn't see us coming down the street. So we go yeah. and hop the fence behind our house and pretend like we play in the backyard the whole time, so we wouldn't <laughs> get in trouble. So we always you know, we, do that. Uh, so every times when uh, you know me, Carlos, Izaguirre, yeah, me, him, and Sean, we would bike. We, you know, yeah. I, there's always that meme. How you know back in the day? How you know where your friends were? You find their bikes in the front yard. Did they have the pegs? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the pegs. You know what I'm talking BMX about? The next one, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, well, you like you know where your friends are when you find the bikes. Oh in yeah, the front all yard. lined up. Yep. Yeah. So we would bike around like Highland, and we go to Newport sometimes, and we would bike for hours. I don't know how the hell we did it. We had we so would much bike energy. For day yeah. For like, we'd days. always go up to Wheaton, uh, Claret. Not we. Uh, Wheaton Regional Park. Yeah, Wheaton Regional. We yeah. go on the little trails. We used to go to Wheaton Regional, and Carlos had these long boards that were really wide, and we would sit on them like kind of like slalom boards okay. and go down the pathway. And I don't know how the hell his parents let us do that because if, if we hit the wall, oh, yeah, like you think we were holding on to the sides like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And there's like concrete edges to those pathways. Yeah. yeah. If we hit that, we would have torn our fingers off. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Like our fingers would have just grinded into a concrete wall. Oh, that would have been <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> just thinking about it. Well, we it. just did it over and over again. There were so many times in my childhood where I should have gotten much more hurt. Talking oh, about yeah. more stupid d- decisions. I remember it was winter time. It was like me, Cisco, and and Carlos, and I think a couple other people, like a couple people from the neighborhood. We would go to Domino's, pick up some like five by five, like five by five, five deal, yeah, yeah. and then we would finish the pizza, and we were like so like just bored and we just wanted to have fun. We would use the cardboard as sleds down hills, but at the bottom of the hill it was a fence. Yeah. Like we knew the fence was there. Yeah. We would just still do it anyway and just run our heads into the fucking uh, dumbest thing shit. in the world. <laughs> Being a, I, I used to run, so we had a big tree in my front yard, and I would always do stupid shit on my bike, but. Um, I would ride my bike up the tree, and then I'd jump off halfway through and, like, fall on the ground, and Wait, my bike would go all the way up. and fall. Ride it up the tree? How yeah, do so you do had, that? It was an oak tree, so it had, like, Oh, big, like a slope? It had, like, a sloping root, and uh-huh. so I'd, like, I'd like go from the top intersection of Grandview and Lindell, yeah. and I'd, like, freaking gun it and, like, go really hard, and then I'd go, and, like, i try to, like, stay on the bike as long as I could, and I'd probably go, like, five or five feet in the air shit. and then i'd like jump off and the bike would go flying up and oh, then i'd shit. like so not get hit by your own bike do that for fucking hours that's so <laughs> dangerous because it could have been dangerous crush your head i would do so many dangerous things we all did yeah i will say you know probably the best uh life lesson is never my brother and carlos had a had a club that wasn't real what and they said which club Keith, Keith, if you get me Okay, no, I don't think he I said know. Keith. If you uh, if you get me get me a, a cup of soda, you can you might be able to be in the club, and they would just make me do shit. <laughs> <laughs> Little brother, thing. yeah. <laughs> oh shit, Keith. Yeah. If you build a ramp for us right now, you might be able to be in the club. I You're did like, some crazy shit to try to get in that club. Never got in that club. <laughs> Fuck we, Sean. we did that to James, <laughs> <laughs> me and John. <laughs> I never got in that club. <laughs> what was the club called? You never know. No, they didn't let me in it. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what that club was like. <laughs> what reality know. was, me and John would just be in the room playing Madden. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, you can't get in here. Yeah. And the only thing about that, too, is like having a good support system, I think that's what's major key like throughout yeah. all phases of your life. That's like yeah. major important. I want everyone to like hone on that. Yeah. Well, and that's part of it, you know, being a, a lifestyle and health coach, having that support. Some people never had it. You know, yeah. and being if you if you have the courage to come up to me and you know ask for help, I want to give you that support. I yeah. want to give you that that accountability, and so that's that's the goal. And like know? for for the biggest thing with like Wilbur and like Wilbur's going like with the sister, like I feel like the accountability or just having the good like surroundings, yeah. Like what I, I gave you with the yeah. gym and the guys that I'm surrounding you with, yeah, cause it made you, you feel better. Because some people, you know, you talk about it as like. Make me more in a present, not not that I'm depressed, but more in a sad stage. Yeah, you know, like kind of don't need that right so now. So for those who don't know, oh yeah, for the ones that don't know, it's my sister. She was diagnosed with brain cancer. Um, I don't know the exact. It's and a and a. I can't say it. It's it's long, but it's, it's stage a medical term. Yeah, <laughs> stage three. Stage four is the strongest. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, the doctors told her the most she has to live is six months. Okay, and uh, it's really hard right now yeah. but you know when i talk to people about it some people are like oh i'm sorry you know you know it's, i don't need that yeah, yeah. you know when i talk to brian I'm like, all right just go work out like, okay yeah. That's, yeah, like, that's what i need you know? i don't think even once i've, I've said i'm sorry to you no you know <laughs> no. And, and and the thing is what's weird is i don't ever know what to say when people say i'm sorry like oh, yeah thanks like uh, yeah. i don't i don't know like i never <laughs> it's okay yeah, yeah no, I, I get the same thing like a lot of people compliment me like we're like doing like a podcast the yeah. personal training all my all my whatever i do mm-hmm. but i don't know what to say back yeah, I'm like, thank yeah, you. I don't, yeah, I don't know. When or people, so when people say that, like, oh, I'm like, oh, thanks for being sorry. I guess I, I don't. Yeah, know. Cause I understand yeah. exactly how that feels, yeah, and I don't want to yeah. put you in my position. Yeah, so it's just you know, I try, I just try to deal with it day by day, and you know, hopefully she gets but better. It's good to have that support around yeah, you. And, yeah, you know, your sister sounds like sounds like she. Yeah, I feel like that. What made me very change my life around too is by because you know I used to be heavy. I used to be two sixty. I'm at two what thirty eight now? Yeah, two thirty eight. Two thirty eight. Two thirty six so yeah. on uh, Thursday. Yeah, two thirty six. So what is that? Twenty three pounds. Check my weight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that's what made me change my life because you know I saw her. She's fighting for hers literally, and I'm over here just being a drunk, lazy guy. And yeah. so 
you know, why not just try to lose weight and be yeah. healthier? Make the best out of yeah, your life. pretty much, you know. Yeah, and that was like within two months. Yeah, two months. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, so and this this what happened. This was happening, pretty yeah. much. So I mean, and that's you know what you're doing is the goal for me to help people to do. Yeah, mm. you know, with if somewhere to call me and ask for my assistance, I wouldn't say help. Like, because help means, like, they're helpless. Yeah. No. You know? Because I'm not helping some. Like, nobody's helpless. They just need to find Do you feel work. like, let's say, if I were to call you and, like, someone like me, my situation, like, I'm not looking for a therapist, but I'm just yeah. looking for someone to, to help me from being down. Yeah. So, you I know? Would, so, yeah. And that's that's a big that's a big difference between that. So, for me, a therapist is someone who looks in the past. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Hold it down. Take a piss. Yeah. <laughs> so someone a therapist is someone who looks in the past and works on your past say you know you know i had a rough childhood and it's messing up my relationships right, right, right. nowadays so a life coach and a health coach a lifestyle coach as i am i look towards the future i don't even talk about the past like okay. it may come up but it's yeah. not my main point of con like i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh, you remember when you did that yeah, yeah. remember when you did this yeah. like that's like now this is happening like we're gonna talk about um, the past in a way to help your future. Right. So, like, um, you know, we're like, what do you want? What do you want to become? How do we get there? Mm-hmm. Type thing. So, and for someone like you, it would be just support and accountability. And you know, you wanna you wanna be more active. You wanna have be better in your life. What does that mean to you? And how do we get there? And then you would we would brainstorm, talk about different ways, different yeah. hobbies you can do, and stuff like that. And things like I would be like, you know, you want to get fit. Let's do you, go to the do you gym. ever be hard on people when like, you know, they talk to you one week like, yeah, I'm gonna hit the gym every day from now on, eat healthy, and you talk to them next week and they're eating potato chips all day yeah. and being a couch potato. And yeah. Know. So that's part of it is jumping in too quick. That's okay. a big thing. So a lot of reasons why people fail. So you think about like the diet mentality, right? Yeah. You say, oh, I'm going to go keto or I'm yeah. going to go paleo or anything right. like that. Like, it's hard to make that a lifestyle. It's very difficult. It's expensive. You tell me you're going to – there's one diet, um, this uh, Himalayan salt diet, which okay. I think is wild. Is that pink salt? Yeah. I heard, I heard it's drink, not that good, though. I don't know. You drink salt water. Oh, that's gross. As a cleanse. Yeah. And basically it just dehydrates your body, mm. your cells. And Wait. that's how you lose Shouldn't weight. Shouldn't you retain water? It's, it's a salt? water – I don't, I don't know. Here, Regardless, it's a fitness it's a guy. Diet. Comes back in. Yeah. <laughs> Let me correct you real quick. <laughs> well, regardless, it 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 helps you lose weight in an unsustainable way. Yeah. So, I would. My goal is to create a lifestyle change in a way that's lasting effect. Right. Something that's sustainable for you. Like, I'm not telling you if you want to eat potato chips, eat potato chips. So you half a bag. Yeah. Be instead happy. of a full bag. Yeah. Okay, there you go. You know, you're, like you're not, you know, you don't want to eat a full bag. You let them know they're wrong, but not in a yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna say you're call you a fatty because yeah. you eat a whole. Th- I'll be like, yeah, I eat a whole bag of like when I eat chips and salsa, mm-hmm. I can eat a whole jar of salsa. Oh, it's so okay. Yeah. yeah, easy. Yeah. I can eat the easy. whole bag. So the whole family so pack thing. So when yeah. I sit here and I say I eat a whole jar of salsa, now what I do is I have a certain bowl that I use. Yeah. That if I fill it to the top, it's like half a jar of salsa. Habits. It's habits changing habits. So yeah. I use that bowl when I know I want to eat chips and salsa. I have that bowl, and I can't, can't go past that. I can't yeah. go past that. or else. And if I do... You got to go running. I, if I do, I realize it, I accept it, and then I enjoy the shit out of it. <laughs> but I'm like, God, I like, I'm like, I'll sit there, and I'll be like, I just ate a whole... I like, I'm eating a whole bag of chips right now. That's it is for me when I got... One day, I told I was telling Brian, I was like, man, I eat pizza for like shit. Yeah. I was just like, oh. So like, I was like, oh, well. Yeah, yeah. you can eat... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can eat pizza. Yeah. Enjoy the shit out of it. Yeah. But yeah. know that it's going to cause like, negative yeah. effects. Take, right. take that accountability. Like, we, we had a pool party. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had like... I don't know, at least like three burgers, oh, yeah, like five, five hot dogs. Hot dogs yeah, we're eating like shit some that day. pork. And s'mores at the end of the night. S'mores. Yeah. But you're having fun. Yeah. So yeah. That's the main. So my thing is, I want to make it, I want to let you have fun. I'm, but I still drop weight. Yeah, we day. know it's crazy. He lost weight still that yeah. same week. Yeah. And my thing is, weight and energy and mindset and all this stuff, if you're happy, you're going to go where you want to go. Yeah. yeah. Right? You're 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 losing weight. You're still eating. You're you 
you know, having a fucking barbecue and enjoying yeah, because I yourself. cheat like maybe once, twice, sometimes a week. Yeah, which isn't bad. But and I honestly think stress is probably the biggest contributor to fat. Yeah, that is. Yeah. So there's low levels. Why? Because stress makes you eat bad. So there's low, something in your in your body with like your hormones or it's like your cortisol. Cortisol, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So low level stress creates cortisol. Cortisol chemical effect. It's a chemical effect that a lot that like kind of it's like a fight or flight thing. So yeah. you think back into like the Stone Age, right. people were eating. They'd eat, and then they were like they had to eat, right? Mm. They were like, if I don't eat right now, then I can't eat later because I'm like running yeah. for my life, right? Yeah. So cortisol is a is something in your body that helps you store fat. Yes. And fat helps you sustain um, weight or gives you more energy. Like it stores weight in your body. I like remember I was telling you about like if you didn't eat all day today, yeah, it, it should be fine right now because mm-hmm. you're already overweight. Yeah. So your body's gonna use its fat. As energy, yeah. because so it I has live without, left over. I can live three days without eating. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> so, I mean, technically it's I true. <laughs> but then it was like I was telling you, once you get down to a certain level, like yeah, once you get like sixteen percent, I'm like, nah, that, yeah. don't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a fight or flight thing. So like, stress creates cortisol. Right. Cortisol. So people with low levels of stress, like hormone. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Consistent low level stress. It's it's a it's a thing that they get big bellies. Mm-hmm. You know? Like get bloated. It's a bloated thing, you know. Mm. You look at my like my dad, not to make you feel bad. <laughs> Sorry, dad. But he's got a big belly. He's got a big belly, but he's got he's got he's really ripped. He's yeah. like he got massive arms. What does he do that he stays in shape? He Just, works out in the basement and okay, yeah, stuff like that. He's always and he, active. And he's yeah. very active. Yeah. And he's always had big arms. Okay, and, but he's got little legs too. Like he's got little chicken legs. We always <laughs> tell him that. He got little chicken legs. <laughs> your mom, I remember I was in the backyard, your mom telling me a story when uh, they got engaged. Mm-hmm. And she said she did the corny one with the big box and small th- inside the smaller box. And I think you were there that day. I don't remember. It was it was like, I think the first time I was there, at your, it was one of your parties. Okay. And your mom was back there. And uh, That's the best part about our parties. That <laughs> your mom was <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, and he, she started talking to Brian. And I think Brian asked, like, so how did it happen? Yeah. She said, I proposed to him. And... I put a big box and a small box in that box and then another one yeah. and kept on going. A little nesting box. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Yo, it, it, it was guy. funny. It was random. I go to people's parents like, oh, how'd you get married? <laughs> 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 well, there's a party yeah. with people my age downstairs. <laughs> Your mom's like, wait. <laughs> <older." laughs> some, some people who really enjoy our parties, like people who love coming to our parties, they always say one of some of their favorite parts is talking to my mom and dad. Talking to my dad on the porch. My dad would come down with like a liter cup we get kegs at our parties, and we'll just fill up the liter cup and then just go sit on the porch and chill. Were you guys drinking when you were under 21 in front of them? or um, uh, I wasn't since I didn't drink until I was 21, but yeah. my brother did, yeah. Would they yeah. say something? like uh, Sean, In the beginning, would... they did. Yeah. yeah. But once they realize they can't control it, they'd rather it be done there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's They were just more happy they can control it inside the house yeah. than yeah. us being It's It's a yeah. responsible parent thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always hate parents who, like... Because, like, if a parent, like takes your alcohol away and all that then you're gonna be rebellious and be like oh, oh yeah 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 cause my parents will get, it'll flip out when i bring like one beer in the house like what are you doing yeah my parents one beer yeah they yeah exactly yeah like my my brothers and his friends they all started with smearing off ices and oh that's gross <laughs> that's the worst hangover <laughs> in the yeah. world so like but yeah my parents would like you know they try to stop in the beginning but eventually they were just happy it was being done there W- were you 21 yet when we had that whole board, that uh, pong table full of uh, beer Names. caps? Yeah. Or no, the... we had bottle caps. Oh, beers. yeah? Oh. It's still there. He made me sign a table one time. Yeah, we, yeah. we had a table that we all signed. What happened to that? Were you 21 oh, already? Cool. I was not 21. Oh, so you weren't even drinking while we <laughs> finished the whole table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he made me sign a table once. He's like, sign my table. Yeah, we have... Uh, we have uh, every wall in our basement is signed by somebody. That's pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. I really love that basement. Yeah. But let's let's just do it. Uh, let's wrap up on that note. Uh, Keith, where where can where can they find you if they want to contact you for some of your life services? Because you're a real guy. You're authentic. Yeah, I'm authentic. you're just a beer drinking like all of us. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm we here. all have our own problems. Yeah, we all got our own problems. <laughs> I'm here to help you with them. Um, you can email me. Um, I'll give Brian my email to put on on YouTube. It'll be YouTube. in the description. Be in description. Uh, it's uh, Keith, on the podcast. Keith N. My middle name is Newell, but it's Keith N. Hollister at uh, gmail dot com. You can email me. Newell. Newell is my middle. You name. You have an it's Instagram where people can check you out and stuff. Or uh, I don't have an Instagram. Okay. I don't. I I've always like been skeptical 
I don't want to be like one of those annoying Instagram yeah. people who like sends out positive messages. So what's the best day. way to contact you? Like, I guess, uh, shoot me your again. Brian's an annoying guy. Every day. <laughs> So uh, what's the best way to contact you? Sorry. You can do that. You can Facebook. Uh, you can call me. Uh, you can call or text me. I'll give out my phone number. It's 301-219-5753. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Oh. Brian's like, all don't right. give out your number, sir. I mean, all right. If you want to do that. Hey, I'm, I mean, I'm cool with it. I'll okay. pick up every any phone. I'm one of those guys who picks up every phone call. What is it too late to call you for, like, uh, advice? You can, yeah, anytime. You can so email me get anytime. You can text me anytime. I wouldn't call me after 5 just because. Really? Be, 5 in the afternoon is too late? Be respectful. I don't know. I'm chilling with my girl. Office hours. I feel like after five would be a good time because that's the time everybody's getting off of work. True. You can text me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. Do that first. I got unlimited. Text, gotta yeah. text me as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but Facebook is a great way to get in touch with me. Um, Do you set up appointments for phone calls? Like, hey, we're going to talk at 8 o'clock. Yeah, today. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So All that's right. so you would text me and be like, hey, I, so I heard you were... Uh, I heard you were talking on the podcast. Uh, I'm interested. And then we would set up a time to do a discovery session is what I call it. Uh, it's a 60-minute uh, phone call where we would kind of dig a little deeper and get um, get kind of some background and some goals in and see if I'm a right fit for you or if you're right a fit for me. And if you're not a right fit for me, maybe if I have someone who is a right fit for you. Um, right well, now, since you're practicing, would you do it, I guess, Couple of sessions for free, or you're just uh, uh, so the first session. So the discovery session is free. Okay. So that's 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 a that's that's so that's like a that's a seventy five dollar value actually. But um, and but I'm doing get that a first for free. date for free. Yeah, you get the first date for free. Um, so people pay your I guess your fee as a package up front, or you pay like I guess monthly basis. Or yeah. How does so that work? when depending on the package you do, I have three packages. I have a fourteen day cleanse. I have a uh, 90 day intensive um, is what I call it the total transformation 90 day intensive um, and that would be like 12 sessions one hour a week accountability stuff uh, we would work it's different for everyone so and uh, and I have a four session um, package so that would be you know either once a week or once every other week for two months um, and uh the payment plans are, you know, yeah. we can work with what you got. You know, we, uh, I do, I obviously, I, we would work with the fees and stuff. Right. But, uh, yeah, you can play on a monthly basis. You can do everything up front, which you would get a discount for, uh, just for the enthusiasm. <laughs> 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 um, uh, we can do, you know, we can really work with whatever you want to do. So. Boom. There you go. Wilbur. Anybody want to reach out to you? Plug um, your shit. Well, nothing really I do. I just cook. You want me to cook for you? Hit me up on Instagram. Uh, uh, what's my Instagram? Ill underscore. Is it underscore? Under, whatever it's called? I think it was ill underscore will. Yeah. Ill, I-L-L underscore will one zero. Want me to cook for you for a party or something? Hit me up. Boom. Uh, for me, we got something going on. I got Stephanie Morfessis and Priscilla Johnson. For all my females who think if you lifting weights makes you bulky, they're going to do a, a seminar we're going to talk about lifting. Like, Stephanie's a bodybuilder. Uh, Priscilla is a CrossFitter. They're going to talk about it. And then I'm going to come in and be like, oh, shit, I was right the whole time. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. thank you, Keith. Appreciate you. Boom. Thank you. Will. All right. Best co-host in the game. Well, ah, ah, ah. See you next time. All right. Peace, guys.